marriage. Mm-hmm. Are you are you cool? Are you do you want to get married? I feel like I'm married as soon as I commit to you. Because I'm a lawyer person. If I feel like what you mean you're a lawyer person then? I am. Nigga, that ain't how law you that's not how it works. It is in my heart. Because it's between me, you, and God. Not paperwork. I do it. I have a wedding for you. I ain't just ain't doing that paperwork. Do you sign contracts that don't benefit you? No. I I ain't either. Stay woke. <laughs> that was me back in the day. That was definitely me. That was me before I got married to my wife. That was me. Oh, the way I ain't doing that paperwork. Yeah, I showed that paperwork. I said we don't need to get married. I said I am as good. And then, real talk, and we've been married twenty six years now. Um, and I told her, I told her now. I even said today, I don't think we needed to get married. I said I am just as dedicated to you now as I was back then before we got married. I saw the the ceremony as just signing some paperwork. And now, granted, some legal obligations, no doubt about that, but nothing in our relationship has changed that now that we got married. Besides a legal obligation, I'm still as dedicated. I love her just as much. And, and you know, my attitude was like we could have saved some money on that wedding in Las Vegas when I, we got married. I think that worked for you. I don't know if it can work for the average couple, though. Well, there's a difference yeah. between the wedding and marriage. They, they seem to go together, but it's, they're different. Why are you laughing? I'm serious. Like a wedding is just a, a celebration of the decision you've already made. But a marriage is different. You could definitely, because people get married all the time without having, they go to the courthouse or they go to right. Vegas and get married with uh, Elvis or whatever. That's, that's, what, that's right. what we did. We yeah. went to Vegas. So, see, that's exactly. Yeah. So, that's not, you know, you, you could say it's a wedding, but, you know, it's whatever. It's, it, it's different between a wedding and a marriage. But what happens before a wedding, though? The decision's made. Who do you ask for that decision? Are you saying that, are you referring, like, how men ask women for the hand, for a woman's hand in marriage? That. Yeah. But before you do that, is it traditionally you ask the well, woman's parents? Well, you're, yeah, so if you're a traditional person, you, know, you, you, ask, <laughs> you, ask, the, you ask the parents. I was terminated. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't need to do that in today's, you know. I guess it, it depends on your culture. It depends on, you know, your tradition. And, and you know, from a man's perspective, it depends on the parents. You know, and that's the conversation you would have with her before, like way before, you know, like now that you're proposing to her, you would just say, hey, babe, you know, if I was going to marry you, you know, what do your parents expect? Am I supposed to ask them first or, yeah, and she'll tell you. Right. Well, so you should, because like, she just... leaves her parents' house to go into your house. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the traditional way. And I'm not against tradition. I'm all for tradition. And generally speaking, parents like me. Generally speaking, mm-hmm. you know, I've had I've been in relationships where the parents my parents can't like, stand you, bro. Yeah, like, what you mean? Oh, your mama like me. See, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, do you guys? Did you did you ask your did you ask Keisha's parents? Um, no, I didn't. Um, Keisha comes from a divorced home uh-huh. like myself, and so the, the access wasn't there. But respect to. Jose Hopkins, he's been an amazing support to our marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I could do it over, I would ask him. Um, as a matter of fact, our 20th is coming up and I will ask him, can I have another 20 years? You mm-hmm. know, so this is going live before it, it, it gets there, but God before we get there. But, um, you know, I, I think what the guy said on Shannon, Shannon Sharp's um, podcast, he said in his view, he did to him. It is in my heart. And, and, and there's a lot of that in this world where yep. we, we make decisions based on how we feel, but it's not biblical. It's not legal. It's how he feels. And we know our emotions change on a lot of things yeah, through life. Yeah. Uh, Orlando already teed it up. It's how he used to feel and see about things about marriage. So we have to be careful about our emotions because um, he be he may be blocking a real blessing from God. By not ordaining his marriage through God's lens, but through his own religion. His well, no, own, that's an interesting thing, though. Because... His own wants and feel, because with, when a union through God, there's you're blessings the that come that's... You're in the covenant. Yeah, you're now in his circle. So he has things for you that you're going to receive through your marriage that he won't receive because he's not married. Now, so wait, I have a question. Okay. I, I really have to interject here. Um, I'm going to set a stage, and I'm going to take... Big brother. That's what I call Uncle Sam, government, big brother. Whatever. Okay. Okay. He said he, he'd he have a, a wedding. Yeah, that's that's ordained in that, God. Right. You can have a a priest, a pastor, 
set if you set the if stage legal, you have your but hold on, but I'm sorry, is it legal, you have, legal, have you have you you have and here's the biblical side you have your witnesses mm-hmm. and he, he even said my, my woman he, he me, said no paperwork no paperwork. But, said no paperwork. But, but paperwork granted, refers to legal, legal like to the but, right, state. To this, but here's the thing. If I'm standing before my pastor, okay. my wife, then, then, and my family, and my I don't care what Uncle Sam says. Exactly. I got me, God, and my wife. But he ended it with, I won't sign anything that won't benefit me. So he just ruined the whole thing. It it's how you present the whole package, not just three-fourths of it. He's okay. saying, you don't benefit me to go the full way legally. State government and and God's ordained law in His he word. Says, he says, you know, so when you leave God's whole ordination out of the the equation, what God's called into reality, now you're you're making your own way, okay, and that's why I don't get down with that because now you're making your own reasons for how you feel. Well, the icing on the cake is even today's culture, and we'll just say in California, you together for five years. You married, <laughs> come along, or is, yeah. it, or, yeah. or is it a situation ship? If you're together for five years and you guys are not married, is it a situation ship? Because there's Depends. no title, there's no label. So. No, I think when he said contract, he's talking about the legal contract according to the state, right? Mm-hmm. right? And so there's this huge debate online between other podcasters and just people who talk about it, where the, the question is, does marriage, legal marriage, benefit uh, men more or women more? And that's kind of the, you know, the debate. And I think that's probably what he was referring to when he says, would you sign a contract that doesn't benefit you? Because the argument is that marriage today doesn't really benefit men from a legal standpoint. Why? Because most divorces are actually initiated by women, mm-hmm. according to statistics. And then out of those marriages, if, if children are involved, uh, the woman wins the case that's in yeah. custody. That's, that's true. That's and true. and that meant, and that basically means that men actually pay more than women do in child support. So it from that standpoint, it feels to men, most men, like marriage is a beneficial to me. It's but it's not it's not the marriage. Marriage is beneficial in a lot of ways, even in legal ways. But divorce <laughs> there's a difference. There's a difference. So marriage is beneficial. Divorce is hard for anybody. And, and and I've never heard of a smooth divorce. Like, that divorce is awesome. I've never heard that. Not to say <laughs> that there aren't my my cases. When, I, when I was mad, I had all yeah. my hair. When my I got divorced, I lost all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see that. Yeah, my mom, didn't take my, my mom didn't take my dad to the cleaners when they divorced. She didn't even take alimony. Mm. Yeah, I've seen she just took child support. I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that that doesn't yeah. exist. I'm just saying you never really hear of smooth Agreed. sailing. I agree. See, there's something else I also want to put on the table because you were talking about the legalities and things. Yeah. There's also an aspect where, I mean, we'll call it for what it is. <laughs> there are also those prenups in these equations too. Yeah. And there's a part of the element where it's like, oh, I'll marry you, but I want a prenup. It's like, if that comes across the table, then we're not in this all together. I don't because that's an ex- that. No, because here's the thing. That's I can a tough say one. This. That's a tough okay, one. Okay, I'm... That's I'm, a good point. Though. I've been married. September will be 15 years. Okay. Thank you. Um, Congratulations. Still, I'm like, I still feel like I know you're probably dumb father. Like, damn, 15 years. Right. Yeah, I was like, whoa. You know, it's um, I still feel like I'm in my honeymoon stage yeah. at times. Oh, I love um, that. And the, the crazy thing is, and I'm a little personal, um, at one point in time, we had the kind of conversations like, wait, are, we want a prenup in this, com- this aspect of it? And it was interesting because when I proposed, I literally had nothing. I literally had nothing. I lost my job the week I was going to propose to her. Okay? So I was coming. I was the scrub. I was rolling in my friend's passenger seat. I didn't have a job. I had literally like maybe 50 bucks to my name because I spent it all on a ring. And then I'm like, hey, wait, and we, 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 are you, I'm not, what are you going to take from yeah, me? I got nothing. Up, right? He's like, <laughs> you can take this. <laughs> what right? old ass laughing champion like, like, had in my pocket? <laughs> <laughs> But the interesting thing is we had to have that truthful conversation and it hurt. It really hurt because to me, that's an extra strategy. To me, that means you don't believe in this dynamic of what God wants to bring together. Uh, no, this is where I, I was I, at I, in I my life and what I, I experienced. Let me give you another side to this. I've seen the other side to this. I had a, I had one of my partners. He was in the Marines. Okay. He got married to this woman and they got married and it's what it is. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about the legal obligations, this is where it really hit them. Their marriage didn't work out. Okay. They only were married for like three or four years in the Marines. Um, they should have been able to go their separate ways. But she took him to court 
And to this day, until until he dies, she gets 40% of her retirement benefits mm-hmm. from the Marine Corps mm-hmm. for a marriage that lasted three or four years. Mm-hmm. That is the issue. That's where I think a prenup is. I don't think it's right that uh, a woman or a man be married three or four years and the other spouse or the other partner gets to take everything you've earned, uh, not everything, 30 or 40% of what true. you earned before the marriage even happened. That's the, that's the, the problem I have. Especially with that. today, right? Because like, you know, when these laws were put in place at that time, what would, what did marriage look like, and yeah, and, 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 and what family. did the, the dynamics of the family look like? Men, well, men were the breadwinners, mm-hmm. typically speaking. Mm-hmm. Women either were not allowed to work, yeah, or if they were that. allowed to work, they, was, they yeah. their their jobs were like limited. Like they, right. they they had very little access to certain types of work. So women almost had to, not almost, they really literally had to depend on their husbands. Mm-hmm. You had to get married when you were 18, 19, 20 years old, right? And when you got married, you were staying at home. And if you did have a part-time job, you were a secretary making less than minimum wage yeah. as a woman, right? Stereotype so, yeah. exactly. But yeah. now, there are, the workforce is heavy. Equal. It's more than equal. More it's than heavy. Than yes. Like, women. Yes. women are more educated than yep. men across the board. They yep. have more they degrees than we yeah. do. Yep. Yep. They outnumber us. There's like four to, four to one. Yep. Uh, and so they're heavy in the workforce. All my boss, well, not all, but majority of the bosses at my current job are women. Yep. Uh, uh, the last three or four jobs I've had, all the people in power. Shout out to the women out there. Yeah, yeah. Shout out oh, to yeah. the women. They were, all, they were all women, right? So... In the workforce, it's a little bit more than 50-50. And some women are making more. Now, I know there's a big debate about how men make more, but that, that's another debate for another day. But my point is, women don't necessarily need men anymore for that, right? Just the way our society is set up. So now, but still, by and large, women, like I said, win most of the custody battles and they, and they pay that's less true. in child support. Absolutely was, true. And so I don't think that it's really fair necessarily because it's like, well, hold on, you got a full-time job. <laughs> you are educated. You have a degree. You're more educated than me. You make a little bit more than me. When I get the the worst, you get to keep the kids, and you make more, and you take a lot of my money. Oh, that's yeah. a little. That's a little tough. Two wrongs. Swallow. Two wrongs don't make it right. But for years, women have been getting the shaft, and the men had the yes. total advantage. Secondly, I I see a very different uh, an aspect of it as different having separation of church and state. When we talk about marriage and marriage ceremonies, all the, the benefits, the pros and cons that come along with that, you really, you know, Michelle and I, my wife and I, we break it down. If we really look at marriage and we're all going to get older, all of us are aging, you know, got, I have more days uh, behind me probably than I have in front of me. And in the end, um, I'm confident and I'm happy that I have a wife and I have a partner. And if something happens to me, I walk outside and I get hit by a bus mm-hmm. and somebody has to make a decision. I mean, when we talk about marriage, they get to decide if we live or die. If I get hit by a bus and I got a 50-50 chance, me and my wife, we've already talked about it. I said, if I have a 30% chance or better, keep me alive. If it goes below 30%, let me go. And we both said, uh, mine's 30 versus 50. <laughs> so, uh, so, and, but so we're talking uh, about a spouse conversation. or a partner who will make a decision on whether you live or die and vice versa. So when he talks about, when he talks about, well, I don't sign no contract that doesn't benefit me, I would hate to be sitting there and have somebody I don't even know, care about or love, make the decision on I, if I die or live or what happens to me. That's if true. something, if, if I can't make the decision on my own. So I think we need to look at the complexity and a little bit more universal of the, what that really means. And that is the biggest advantage I see of being married. Knowing you got somebody who has your back. Let's look at that complexity. He don't say no contracts that benefit him. So there's risk on his end. Huge risk. Married. I don't think he even considered that. No, there's risk. There's risk in everything we do. Right. So let's say his risk. We all can agree a man's risk in getting married is financially. You know, you're giving up some level of dependence or independence to cater to a household. Well, one thing I don't think we talk on is what is a woman's risk in getting married? Are there any risks for women? Oh, yeah. Times, yeah. yeah. She can risk her financial independence. Absolutely. She can risk her travel aspirations, her career goals to attend to a house. So she, she might not be able to take that promotion because it'll, it'll conflict with her household. And it might cause resentment and feelings of unfulfillment. What do you mean we make conflict with the household? Just to make sure we define that. What do you mean conflict with the household? Like, let's say like, she takes on like, like a job. Like let's that. say she takes on a promotion that requires her to be to travel. Okay. Better pay, income, pay the bills. We all got to pay bills. Okay. Right. Romance and finance, in my opinion, that's are 
That's very important in a relationship. Okay. But how does it conflict in the household? She's traveling. Can't be home with the kids. Husband wants to come home to a hot plate or something like that. Can't spend time with the husband. Let's say you have kids. You're spending more time with the kids and date nights with, with each other. It's easy to get carried away with kids than it is to, oh, man, I'm feeling unfulfilled because these kids' mess are met, me, but not mine. So what's the, that's why I was asking, like, the risk of the women to get married. Well, that's a, I think it depends on the roles in the household. That is more of, I think, also a traditional thing that, yeah. you know, the wife takes care of the kids and this and that. For a while, when I have no problem saying, when I, when I graduated San Diego State and I had my office in between careers, I was a stay-at-home dad. Mm-hmm. My my wife, she traveled. Yeah. She worked for she worked for as an insurance adjuster, doing all kinds of traveling. Yeah. I was at home with our child, changing all the diapers and doing all of that stuff. Oh. And I didn't have a problem doing it. It's my baby. I'll take care of it. We'll do it. So I don't have any problem with role reversal. But I wasn't like, hey, you need to be home and have a hot plate ready for me or anything yeah. like that. It was me who actually had dinner ready for her. And I was totally cool with that. Yeah. But when I found my job and everything, that's when the city was old enough. She, we got babysitters. We got people to watch her and everything that goes on that. I think marriages now have to be more, so much more incorporated in teamwork. And this is your role. This is my role. Parents, and especially with the um, the dual income that's needed is to it just survive now. In California? Yes. Anybody oh. that can afford to have a house in California, if both both uh, parties aren't working, both parents aren't working, you're going to be renting, and they're going to keep going up on your rent every, every, every dog on month. Yeah. And do you know how expensive it is to have a kid now in California, too? So I think it's it's incumbent now. I mean, if anything, if my wife was sitting on the couch or doing that, those traditional roles, I'd say, oh, no, baby, you got to go and get, a little, get you a little part-time job. Mm-hmm. Add into this household um, income because it's absolutely requirement and necessity now that, now in today's times. Mm-hmm. I, I, got, I, I, got a, I got a deeper question for you. Right. Um, you asked the question, what's her risk? Mm-hmm. Her risk is marrying the man that's, that... She thought he was somebody that he's not. Uh, perpetrator. Another risk. Perpetrator. perpetrator. That could be a man's risk. So too. my wife and I had this conversation about a week ago, and we were celebrating a promotion I got, and just really congrats, sweet. Congrats. Thank congrats. You. Congratulations. congratulations. And I said thank you for journeying, doing this whole journey with me all these many years, and the good and the bad of it. And she said you always saw the potential in me. So I wasn't who I am today. Right. Who she thought I was. 20 plus Back years now. ago, but she was willing to do life with me in hopes that I would become an honor to marriage and do all the things that women ex- hope their men be or are. Mm-hmm. So the risk is women marry men all the time off of potential. Doesn't mean that man ever ever reaches it. Doesn't mean he, ever, he truly honors the marriage. Doesn't mean he truly pours into the household. They're, they're taking a risk. They're taking a leap of faith. Well, because because a man is supposed to be the leader of the house, and I always bring this up, but we're not always ready to lead. Correct. I don't have P Diddy money. I don't have celebrity income. At least you don't have P Diddy ways. But the, but, <laughs> but but with that said, maybe I did. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's the old me. So I think women take huge risk in putting their lives in 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 alignment with the man that's supposed to be leading. And if they don't, Mm -hmm. what does that turn out? How does that come out in the wash? They gave us children. It provided a a home full of love and the man is still acting a fool. There's a risk in that for women. They don't get what they thought they were going to get out of us. No, I'm going to play the other side. It's a two-way street, though. He just asked about the risk that they take. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But don't you think we as males, men, we do we take risks too. Yeah, but, he, yeah, but his question, question was, what risk does women, women take? Because okay, yeah, right. okay. we talk about the financial obligation or the financial liability when we're financial divorcing and, divorce. and what we lose out of the deal if it doesn't work. So I'm, I'm answering his question on what do women risk going into a marriage? And that's it. They risk not marrying a man that's not who they thought he was. But that's a beautiful oh, thing I love. So like More than it never comes. About, about your potential. Keisha saw your potential. Yeah. Michelle saw the same potential in me, but I have no problem saying I was broke, especially coming out of school and everything. We were broke. And the beautiful thing about it, we talked about it as husband and wife. She said, she know, she said, no matter what, Orlando, no matter what, I knew you were the one for me because I could be totally broke with you and still be happy because that's what it was about, my happiness. Mm-hmm. Michelle and I, you know, I don't know anybody at this table, but Michelle and I, we were so destitute at one time. We weren't sure where our next meal was coming from. And as a team, as a team, 
we found change in the couch, change in the cars and everything. The only thing I saved was by grace. Of course, by grace by God. We ended up saving about $18, $19. And thank goodness we saw a commercial coming on. And it was five, two, you get two Big, Mac, two Big Macs for $5 at McDonald's. And I kid you not, that held us over for about seven days until like we both got our paychecks. We were that destitute. But you know what? I look back at that with pride now because we did it together and we both risked each other and we struggled through it together. Now, if that ain't, and, 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 if that ain't somebody who's down to ride with you, I don't know what is. I wouldn't trade that for anything. But that's amazing that yes. you have that story and that legacy with your wife and that she's journeyed with you yes. through the highs and the lows. My potential because of my potential, but my potential mm -hmm. wasn't about money. Right. right. It wasn't about providing. It was about us being able to live and grow together. Because again, all of our parents at one point or another got you know in God's order of things. They all went to the um, um, to the altar with the right intentions, and some of it worked for them, some right. of it didn't. Right. Um, but we were still journeying together. So that's where she saw the potential of us being a loving couple together all these many years. The money comes and goes. It wasn't about the money. We we're just celebrating that this season things are looking up right. in so many ways. Right. But it, it was deeper than just financial providing because again, that's the risk women take. Is this, a man, is this man going to be able to provide? Is he going to be a loving husband? Is he going to raise yes. our children right? Is he going to yes. be an outstanding citizen? Is he going to be healthy for the rest of his days? It's so many risks that you said traditionally, Larry, women were marrying into these marriages that they were staying at home and they were so dependent, almost childlike. And no disrespect, but that's the way the world was. It was that leave the beaver set world, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so now where we have options, on both yeah, sides, yeah. It, it is still a risk for women because, again, they're seeing society, society speaking. It's, yeah. They look at biblically speaking that they're subordinate to the man, and the man is supposed to do right in all these areas. Well, he's supposed supposed to. The man's supposed to be supposed, 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 supposed to. Too. Yeah, and that's yeah. and that's the risk they take. Yeah. It's not having that outstanding gentleman to lead the charge. Yeah, and so look, you guys, most of you at this table are married. Uh, yeah, we got three, three out of five. I'm married. No, I, went, yeah. I went through a divorce. Yeah, yeah. you were before. Yeah. I'm not married. I've never been, right? My perspective is this, and I can't take full credit because a friend of mine, uh, Evan, um, wrote a, a screenplay. And uh, there was a line that he wrote in the screenplay that, like, it just, and I can't even, the way he wrote it was more beautiful than what I can explain. But basically, the character in, there, in the script said, when you get married, you're marrying three persons. You're marrying the person that that person was, who they are today, and who they will be tomorrow. And those are three distinct people. You're marrying her today because of who she is today, right. you, and this is who you fell in love with. But you're marrying who she used to be also because there might be some untreated trauma that, you know, will right. probably, right. you know, life issues. experience yeah. and stuff, issues, issues that yeah. might come back and all that. But then you're also committing to the person that she will be in the future because Change is inevitable. Change happens. Right. And I'm saying she, but, you know, this goes for both people. Both like sides. On both right. sides. The husband and the wife. You're marrying that, whoever that person is going to be in the future. So the question is, are you willing to take that chance and that risk of who this person might be? Because we all change over time. Maybe the core of us, you know, doesn't really change, but there are life lessons and there are things yes. that we go through. We're completely different when we you're evolve. 70 we and evolve. 60 years yeah. old, right? <laughs> yeah, you evolve. From when you were 20 or 30 or 30. Right. So there's already there's risks involved. The problem that I have is emotions. Emotions are fickle. <laughs> mm, okay, they're fickle. <laughs> Do you define that? Yes. So right now I feel good. Right? I'm with my boys. I'm happy with y'all. Yeah. Uh right. <laughs> so I feel good. I'm on this podcast. There's people right. listening, and maybe our views are going up. Click the subscribe. Um, <laughs> but I feel good, right? But then, you know, when on, on the drive home, somebody might cut me off in traffic and my feel good goes, turns to anger real quick because I do suffer from road Tenches rage. Tenches like a little John anger. Exactly. Yeah. exactly right? I suffer from road rage when we drive in a slow lane, right? Okay. See, yeah. I'm, about, I'm about to suffer from Sam rage in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you know how to push my buttons.